It's nearly been a year since I flew to New York for the official Nothing Drop for the Nothing Phone 2, met up with the Nothing crew, and hung out with the always awesome fellow Nothing community members. Since, I've used the Nothing Phone 2 as my main Android device. How's it held up long term? Let's jump into it. Well packed with Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, not the latest but still great, it has some pretty solid specs overall including up to 12GB of RAM, 512GB of storage, UFS 3.1, IP54 rating, Gorilla Glass build, and a 4700mAh battery. Nothing OS, even with its highly customizable options ensures a smooth software experience in everyday use. There's very little blow and you even get the choice of pure stock Android or the nothing themed skin. I wish more Android manufacturers gave you a similar choice. Aside from the chat GPT integration nothing added recently, nothing also added the ability to customize your wallpapers with wallpaper AI. There's also a plethora of really cool customizable widgets that nothing provides right within their OS and their theme. You can also apply lock screen widgets which are also pretty awesome and pretty useful. I really like using those. Nothing has also delivered on their promise of updates, constantly updating the phone too with one of the coolest, most detailed change logs in comparison to any other Android manufacturer. It's not common for me to get excited over a new OTA update, but the updates Nothing drops are truly exciting and have really improved the experience of phone two throughout my use. Backed by Snapdragon, coupled with the heavily optimized bloat-free Nothing OS, phone two has been buttery smooth and is still rock solid in terms of performance. Battery has also been really great for me, topping off quickly with wired or wireless charging. And with the phone too, I can even charge some of my other Nothing devices with battery power share that's also on deck and included. Do I wish Nothing went with a newer Snapdragon chipset? Of course. However, phone too is plenty powerful. Out of all of the latest devices, I still reach for the phone too the most. We can't talk about phone too without mentioning the Glyph interface. I use Glyph a lot for setting custom notification indicators, ride share, ETA, and for timers. Some may call it a gimmick, but when I don't have Glyph, I instantly miss it. Notification LEDs for me are awesome and something I really wish we seen brought back to other devices as well. Hopefully in the future nothing will add additional color options potentially and ways to add additional customization indications by app by contact as granular as possible for the ultimate glyph customization. Content consumption on the Nothing Phone 2 is absolutely immersive. I love the audio and sound that also comes from Phone 2. The display is great having those even bezels and it's something I hope that nothing continues going forward. Moving on to the cameras, I've been pretty happy with the cameras on Phone 2. They're not as good as their high-end flagships, but you won't be unhappy with the results either at the end of the day. I also enjoyed recording video with Phone 2 and having that recording indicator. Feel free to watch my full review of the Nothing Phone 2 that I did a few months back. That is going to have pretty detailed photo samples and video samples, and they're pretty much on par to date. In terms of overall design, feel, and the experience, Phone 2 really wasn't that much different from Phone 1. It's a pretty subtle upgrade in all comparison. Phone 1 and Phone 2 really aren't much different, with Phone 2A, of course, bringing a totally new design aesthetic this year. It makes me wonder what Phone 3 will be like if it's even called Phone 3 given the recent name change shakeup across Nothing's ear ecosystem. And I'm really curious, what specs will the Phone 3 pack given that Phone 2A is now the budget model for Nothing? I'd really like to see a truly ultra version of the Nothing phone in the lineup with the latest specs. However, I am a little bit worried and concerned about pricing considering that the price for Phone 2 was a lot more expensive than Phone one and it really wasn't justifiable and I feel like that overall kind of hindered some of the sales for phone 2 specifically. However, if phone 3 or whatever it ends up being called doesn't truly bring the latest specs, a premium build, and a polished experience, I'm not sure how nothing will continue to compete at least here in the US, which lately honestly doesn't seem like their target market anyways. Don't get me wrong, I love phone 2 and it's an excellent device, but with pricing in mind, there's absolutely many others I'd recommend to most people over this device regardless of my personal feelings of phone too. It's been a great phone for me and I'm excited to see how nothing evolves long term. As always though, let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Take care and stay safe.